Hey out there Akronites, welcome once again to Around Akron with Blue Green. Now on this episode, it's all about outdoor activities here in the city of Akron. I'm gonna visit the Rubber City Jazz and Blues Festival. I'm also gonna visit the Akron Pride Festival. And I'm gonna head over to the Interbelt National Forest. Now to kick this show off, we're gonna head over to Summit Lake. That's right, that's Akron's Lake. And we're gonna learn about the amazing things that are going on there right now. Let's go see what Summit Lake's all about. Summit Lake is one of three sites uh, that, that's been selected for a, a national project called Reimagining the Civic Commons. Uh, four foundations, Knight Foundation, JPB, Kresge, and Rockefeller each kicked in $5 million uh, to a national fund of which five cities were selected. Uh, Akron was selected along with Detroit, Philadelphia, Chicago, and Memphis. Now you hear those other four cities, those are big cities. We are proud of the fact that we are the you know, city of just under 200,000 uh, because we believe we can punch above our weight and we can demonstrate what public spaces can do to build democracy, improve envir environmental sustainability, overcome the division uh, that, that, that's happening in cities right now. That you know, Summit Lake uh, is a place where people can come together and get to know each other and build community. And it, it's another amenity that, it, that makes you want to live within the city of Akron. In the Summit Lake Community Center and specifically the Reach Opportunity Center, Summit County Metro Parks for the past year has had a pop-up nature center. So it's been temporary, they, they've rented a room. If, if you look at the building, uh, if you come down and visit the building in the months ahead, you'll see some big beautiful decals uh, that invite residents and uh, anybody, any towpath trail users and especially your viewers to come in and, and speak with uh, experts at Summit uh, Metro Parks about the birds, they've been doing birding classes, fishing classes, they have uh, animals in the nature center uh, starting to educate the neighborhood on what's there. Another partner is the uh, Akron Zoo. Uh, Doug Piacash and his team are, are starting to help us think about how do we educate everybody on the birds, the fish, the plants, and use this as kind of an outdoor classroom for all of us of all ages uh, to come down and learn about, about what's in Summit Lake. Uh, one of the findings of the environmental assessment is there is a diverse range of wildlife that is frequently you know, using the lake and continues to grow year over year and that's a really good sign uh, for the health of the, the water. For the past now, 10 plus years, the Utopath Trail has only been on the eastern side of the lake and it's a great amenity, it's an amazing thing. Uh, but there hasn't been that loop around the lake and you don't, you know, the northern side looks a little abandoned, you can't tell if you're invited. And on the west side, there's, there's a road on most of the course uh, side of the lake, but it's not really set up for people to walk or bike. So Summit Metro Parks has worked with the city of Akron and that loop trail, which includes a connector from the floating bridge to the Kenmore side. So you won't have to go up to Kenmore Boulevard, you'll just make a quick right and you'll be on the uh, west side of the lake. It's almost a perfect 5K around the lake. It's about 3.1 miles uh, around the lake. So we hope uh, that some uh, entrepreneuring people will start to have some 5K races uh, down here around the lake where you won't have to close one street, but just have a start stop and some, some water and be able to race down here. Or uh, go slow if you so choose. <laughs> The programming has been a really a special part uh, of what's happening here at Summit Lake. There has been a farmer's market led by Countryside Conservancy. There's been uh, music, uh, jazz and blues. Uh, I know Rubber City Jazz and Blues is one of the other uh, great uh, initiatives featured on today's program. And uh, Theron Brown and his team have been doing jazz concerts in Park East and Summit Lake in advance of their festival to invite people to come downtown and check out the main event. It's been a really cool uh, strategy. There's an oversized Adirondack chair behind me. Uh, we're trying to have playful, whimsical, uh, delightful uh, amenities for people that encourages it. Because one of the things we would see is many of these towpath trail users, you're coming from the southern part, you reach Summit Lake, and you hear the highway, and the materials change, the, the wayfinding gets weird, you hit busy streets, you say, ah, kids, let's go back south. 
We want people to feel invited into Park East and into downtown. Because if you make it to downtown, there's ice cream, there's beer, there's amazing library and art museum and all these things that you can't find on the other 110 plus miles of the Towpath Trail but are waiting for you in downtown. So Summit Lake is a key decision point for people and if it's amazing, if it's delightful, and if we can hook them to cross 77 and 59, now we're, now we're creating a new wonderful experience for, for folks. And it's, all, it's not just about the, the people on the $3,000 graphite bike that are down and you know, flying on the towpath. It's about people walking their kids. It's about you know, senior citizens feeling like they, the trail is for them too. Uh, we're, we're working on uh, just a breadcrumb, a uh, number of breadcrumbs of invitation to just keep people moving uh, through the trail in downtown Akron. We use this phrase prototyping in public space, right? A testing an idea, and, and the, the spirit of that is, let's try something temporary, and if the, the, the people that use the space don't like it, we can pull it out, adjust, and try something else. So uh, one of the things that happened last spring was Summit Metro Parks put in a large tent shelter. Uh, any, any of your viewers that use the Metro Parks know their standard wood, you know, concrete floor and a permanent shelter. This was a, a, a test of that. We wanted the residents to say, is that the kind of thing that you want there? Will there be any problems if we put it? You know, and if, if, it, if there is, we'll take it out. Well, the, last summer they, they tested a, a white uh, fabric tent uh, down here at Summit Lake and there were weddings, there were family reunions, there were impromptu, you know, like there are at any shelter, people just using it to, to hang out and, and, and bring their family down and their kids and, and have dinner. That is so successful that uh, right over here, the base has been poured and a worker is, is currently putting the permanent roof for the permanent shelter that will now be a staple here at Summit Lake. You know, what people want in parks is basic things. They want shade, they want a place to cook, and they want a place where they, they feel invited to come hang out and have a great day. These fire pits behind me are another great example. People are roasting s'mores, they're roasting hot dogs, they're getting to know neighbors that they, that they may have lived you know, down the street from for a very long time but hadn't got to know. Simple things, basic things uh, that are done right. Uh, that to me is the exciting part for Summit Lake and we're just getting, war the, the neighborhood's just getting warmed up in figuring out what they want in their neighborhood. Next up, we're gonna head over to Highland Square for the Akron Pride March and then over to Hardesty Park for the Akron Pride Festival. Let's go see what this is all about. I think we need to talk more to each other. I think when, uh, when we feel whether it's a, a group of people or maybe an idea or anything like that, if, if we don't know about something, sometimes we, we have a little trepidation. And so as a, a community, taking time to go out and talk to someone who is, is different than you or identifies differently than you or looks differently than you, that's, that's the key to a, a really inclusive community. We want to celebrate our differences. And uh, I think that's as members and residents of Summit County and Akron, you know, it, it's on us to enjoy our neighbors and you can only do that by spending time with them. So the Akron Pride Festival is in Hardesty Park, which is in the Wallhaven neighborhood of Akron. And it is just a beautiful, expansive park. Uh, we set up it, we set things up just like the Akron Art Expo and other events that happen around town that are put on and organized by the city. The city is a huge partner, as is um, the Summit County. Uh, they're working with us as well. Uh, we put on a bit of a show and line the park with city um, maintenance vehicles to have a show of presence and then we line it with the um, the cars park around the park and we have a kid zone that's set up that's dedicated from noon to three uh, with all kinds of activities for um, kids It's a very family friendly event um, but the park uh, is one of those treasures that's in the middle of right in the heart of the city uh, and what's going on and provides all the space we need to have 10,000 people walk through during the day. Last year, just in the middle of the day and having seen so many people come in and people coming and going and, and really just 
seeing people having a good time. Um, nothing, uh, people didn't seem sad. People were giving out free hugs. Uh, moms were giving out free hugs to people to help people feel welcome and, and celebrate who they are as individuals and that's what it's about. And even speaking to people, you know, and asking them, what do you think of this Akron Pride Festival at Hardesty Park? And they were just amazed and, and said, how grateful they were that uh, this festival was taking place in the city of Akron. And, and that felt really good. It felt really good to be a part of that planning process. It was absolutely the end of the day when you sat and saw 10,000 people uh, come to the park to see what we had going on, to support their friends and family, to be there and have representation. You think about the video that was shot of the Equality March and seeing a thousand people walk down West Market Street. It's never happened in this city before until last year. And so it was just one of those things that after 10 months of planning it, to actually see it come to fruition and pull off and be so successful, that was the awe-inspiring moment was the end, to see that it all came together and went above and beyond anybody's expectations. The Akron Pride Festival is incredibly important to Akron and Northeast Ohio, providing a safe space for people to come out and celebrate the LGBTQ community, support equality, support inclusion. Uh, for Akron, uh, we hope to also pull in surrounding counties that don't have their own Pride Festival or have very many LGBTQ services to bring them up uh, I think it's really important to offer that and I feel that Akron and Summit County offers that in Northeast Ohio. Well I think that what's going on in the community, Akron's always been a very welcoming place and I think we solidified that last year when we had the non-discrimination ordinance pass under the leadership of Mayor Horgan and when you think about what that <clears throat> kind of cultivates in our community and the fact that we're very welcoming. Um, having a festival of that is inclusive for the community was important. So the city um, hosted, was co-hosting the uh, Gay Games 9 with Cleveland in 2014. And we proved at that point that we had a very welcoming community that was um, opening, opening its arms to the LGBT community uh, in the greater Akron area. And so we wanted to continue that legacy that started in 2014 with the Gay Games. I mean, one thing that I really find uh, special, I, I'm an Akron resident and I love the city of Akron and it feels great to have wonderful neighbors and canopy. We're set in the Highland Square area, um, which is a wonderful open community and, and many other areas of Akron are. But our county executive, Eileen Shapiro, uh, Mayor Dan Horrigan, his staff, the city council, um, Sandra Kurt, our clerk of courts. We have so many leaders in this community that just work every day to make Akron a more welcoming, better place. And I'm proud to be here. Next up, we're here at the Interbelt National Forest. Now this is a temporary or quite possibly a permanent exhibit here at the corner of Quaker and Ash Street. Let's go see what this forest is all about. This project actually came out of the 500 Plates project that the League of Creative Interventionists also um, did. And the idea behind the 500 Plates project was to get ideas for what could be on the Interbelt space in the future. Um, and 87% of people at that event said that they wanted green space. And so after that event, uh, Hunter submitted the grant to um, the Night Cities Challenge. Uh, to put a green space on the Interbelt because that's what he heard from the residents of Akron um, that they wanted there. So that's kind of how the idea for this project um, was formed. When they designed the space, they really wanted to have like native plants, native trees um, here like to Northeast Ohio in the space. 
So all of the plants, um, like the flowers and the plants, like potted plants that you'll see are all from Petites, just up the road. Um, and the trees were installed by Rusty Oak, um, which is also here in Akron. Yeah, just park prototyping in general um, is just something that I think we could really use here in Akron. You know, you see vacant lots all over the place. You see um, just plain green spaces with nothing in them. Um, yeah, like no one here has an engineering degree. Um, we, we did this all with, you know, artists. And so um, just using this space as inspiration for what could be in the rest of Akron and beyond, uh, I think is just amazing. I mean, yeah, if you, want, if you want to create your own park, like use what you have, use the resources that you have available to you, um, use what's in front of you and be creative and be innovative um, and don't let anyone tell you no. <laughs> when the grant was written, um, it was written as a temporary project. So for the months of August and September, um, and then it was, the understanding was that we would uh, remove all of the things that we've put here after um, the end of September. And the trees, the plants, um, everything like that was, uh, is planning to be like rehomed um, into new places. Individuals, organizations, businesses um, in the community uh, are free to have them. But our ultimate goal would be to not have to take down this space. Uh, this is city land. So we are hoping that the city sees it as enough of an asset to keep here um, for future use so that we don't have to tear it apart. That's the cool thing about having, um, I mean, having all of the inner belt eventually be decommissioned is like, we have room for everyone's ideas. Like we have room for a park, we have room for a water park, we have room for like whatever your idea is, there is probably room for it. Retail, residential, like, anything. There's going to be room in this space for you. The reception has been so interesting. I think for the last um, the last month when we really started like ramping up the publication a little bit um, and, and the press about it, people were just uh, confused, um, interested, uh, they were curious, they just wanted to, to really see what was going on here. Um, I think that's why a lot of people came to our opening party. Um, and after they came to the opening party, I think everyone finally, it was like a, a, a switch flipped and they were like, oh, this is so cool. I want to be a part of it. Um, I've gotten a ton of inquiries about being a volunteer, uh, about having an event here. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really, really good so far. Why Akron? So I've had a lot of conversations with people um, specifically about the inner belt space. And one of the things that we're doing specifically um, through this project is collecting stories of people who have been affected by the inner belt, um, by the building of the inner belt. Um, if you don't know, the inner belt actually went through an entire neighborhood uh, 40 years ago and bulldozed houses, bulldozed businesses. And when that happened, people, you know, people were moved out, people had to move. Um, and they, they lost connection with a lot of those neighbors, with a lot of the resources they were connected to. And 40 years ago was not a long time. Those people are still here in Akron. And so we've really been connecting with those people um, and hearing their stories uh, and then asking them what, what we could see here in the future, what they want to see here in the future. Um, and we're hearing a ton of green space. We're hearing a lot of park. We're hearing a lot of Central Park, um, Central Park of Akron. And when we look at it, and when I when I talk to the engineers, when I talk to the architects, the landscape architects, um, the big wigs in Akron, um, they see the potential as enormous. Akron has over a mile of soon to be vacant freeway that is worthy of making national news. Um, Akron could be the best small city in America just based on what we do with the Interbelt. And I think that's why Akron. 
We're down here at Lock 4 in front of this amazing mural by Michael Ayers. Now to wrap this show up, we're going to go visit the Rubber City Jazz and Blues Festival and see what this amazing event is all about. I think jazz is a language. Um, I definitely know it was born in the uh, African American community, but it's something that can be enjoyed and uh, participated in by everybody. So for years there's been a lot of musicians that have traveled through the town and have lived here and played. Uh, you know, and that that circuit kind of we were we were in it. You know, that tour schedule. Uh, you got Pittsburgh and New York and all these other places that people were Cleveland that people were going to, and they would also come to Akron. And uh, there's a lot of documentation that I've re recently found with the Akron Beacon Journal of different musicians that have come through uh, to play, such as like Cab Calloway and uh, even Paul Whiteman, that's going back pretty far, Herbie Hancock. And it's really cool to hear those reviews and to see, you know, kind of think of where those people performed at and what was happening at that time and why they were doing it. Uh, and I think a lot of those reasons can, there's something to be said about that today too, of why we play music and release people get from it, uh, the release that the musicians get from it. So uh, We're definitely carrying on a spirit and a legacy, like you said, it's been here. Uh, it's just time that it's exposed and kind of put on a platform, uh, recognized the way it should be. Yeah, we, we, were, uh, we were roommates and uh, we kept on talking about, man, we we really need to uh, to help uh, build the scene back up again because, you know, when I was coming up, you know, there was, uh, I mean, the, the scene was still was still vibrant. You know, there were a lot of great musicians uh, that I came up under: Dan Murphy, Matt Perko, uh, Kip Reed. You know, all all of these uh, these guys really helped me grow as a musician, and. Um, we, we started talking about what if there was a jazz fest uh, in Akron. The idea came upon from uh, the Night Arts Challenge that has come into the city and has been giving uh, matching grants. And we were trying to think of some ideas and we, we thought that it would be nice to uh, set up kind of like a platform to showcase a lot of the local talent that we have here. And we started talking about what, uh, what we needed to do to uh, make that happen. And about a couple months later, I got I got called by Joey, and I had to I had to be gone a lot. So Theron kind of uh, took up the mantle and really, really made it happen. Between myself and Dan Wilson, we played at a, a few around the country and him around the world. So uh, we thought it'd be something that would fit perfectly here in this area and uh, be good for the community and the uh, musical community as well. A lot of vendors uh, in Maiden Lane. You can come uh, check check those out. Uh, we have uh, yeah, we'll have there will be a lot of food out here, and just just come be downtown. Just come experience your city, you know, and uh, you can hear some great music along the way. So the festival takes place August 23rd through the 26th, and uh, the 23rd that Thursday we'll start off at Blue Jazz with my trio. We're hosting our usual jam session. And that's a time where a lot of musicians can come together and meet and greet and play. And it's just a really laid back, fun, fun time. Um, as we go on through the rest of the week, we have events happening at the Akron Art Museum, the Akron Public Library, um, Blue Jazz, the Musica, um, and Lock 3. Uh, so there's a couple of new things we're trying. This year we have Piano Palooza which is uh, a lot of our great pianists from around Northeast Ohio come together at the Akron Public Library. And it's kind of like a dueling piano vibe, which is a lot of fun. Um, and we also have a special artist coming in, Justin Coughlin, who's an incredibly gifted uh, blind pianist. And he'll be showing his documentary at the Akron Public Library on Friday, and then giving his solo performance on Saturday. Um, Really excited about our main artist at Lot 3, it was Sean Jones, uh, 
one of the baddest trumpet players in the world. Uh, so definitely don't want to miss that on Saturday. Uh, and then, man, all your favorite bands from around here. We got uh, Tommy Lehman's bringing in a, a sextet. Dan Wilson's bringing in a group. Uh, we have Blue Light. Uh, so there's a lot of popular bands around here that people follow. Makes me feel useful, honestly. I mean, you know, it's, it's one thing to uh, to leave town and, and, you know, see all these different places, but I really feel uh, a sense of, I, I feel purposeful uh, when I'm uh, able to build up my the community where I, where I came up. You know, I was, I was born and raised here, and it, it means a lot to uh, be able to contribute to the uh, cultural wealth of, of the community. Thank you once again for watching this episode of Around Akron with Blue Green. Now, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop me an email at www.aroundakronwithbluegreen, or you can reach me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks and have a great day.